Great. So this is what we want to do. We want to try this out as a control Lyapunov function for the a new system. Okay. And like I said, the purpose of backstepping is to come up with a control Lyapunov function. Everything else is too easy. Right. After that, you know what to do. Okay. Great. So this was the claim. So I want to prove this claim. How do I prove this claim? Basically, yeah. I mean, just take derivatives and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, you will usually do this, uh, you know, LFV and LGV and all that, but you know the simpler way, just take the directional derivative and whatever term is multiplying the control is the LGV and the other term is the drift term, okay, LFV, okay. So, so I will actually compute, uh, sorry, V dot X comma Xi and this is what, this is partial of V0 with respect to x so i'm taking i'm just taking the derivative piece by piece yeah so uh, i get the partial of v0 with respect to x and then i get what fx plus gx psi which is x dot right and then um, there is no partial of v0 with respect to psi because v0 is independent of psi so done so there is no partial with respect to psi. Uh, now I take the partial of the second term, right? So this will give me psi minus k zero x transpose. Yeah. So this is I'm assuming this is the Euclidean norm, the two norm. So this is just psi minus k zero transpose psi minus k zero, right? So I'm just taking the partial just like I would take the you know multivariable standard multivariable calculus. So this is uh, partial of um, psi, so this will give me, I am just going to write this as psi dot minus ok, just like I take dif differentials, yeah, this is how we have defined v dot anyway, ok, alright, so what do I, I just carefully expand things here continue to write this as fx plus gx psi plus psi minus k0x transpose and I know that this psi dot is just u, right, psi dot is just u, right. So this is u minus del k0 del x times fx plus gx psi, ok, everybody is convinced this is fine, yeah, I have simply substituted for uh, psi dot and x dot, ok, great, great. Now we start playing uh, our fun tricks, ok, as of now, uh, what do I know from the previous page? I know that partial of v0 with respect to x multiplied by f plus g k0 gives me a negative definite term. Yes? Okay. And I am going to use that. What am I going to do? I know that I have partial of v0 with respect to x, f plus g psi, but I am going to write this as g k 0. So, what do I get here? Partial of v with respect to x f x plus g x k 0 x minus uh, sorry plus partial of v 0 with respect to x g x sin minus k 0 x. Yeah, this is just the first term broken into these two pieces. Yeah, why? Because I know that this is something nice, right? So we always want to rely on something that's already nice, right? And then I have, of course, 
साइन माइनस के जीरो एक्स ट्रांसपोज यू माइनस पार्शियल के जीरो विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एक्स एफ एक्स प्लस जी एक्स साइन या ऑलरेट ग्रेट सो दिस आई एम गोइंग टू यूज द प्रीवियस पेज टू से दैट दिस इज लेस देन इक्वल टू माइनस डब्ल्यू एक्स yeah that's the first thing and then you can see that this term also has sin minus k0x right so i can combine it with this term right how this is just a scalar notice is v0 was a scalar so every term in v0 dot is a scalar right just a scalar so transpose of the scalar is the same scalar so we use these things regularly by the way remember this write it down in your notebooks transpose of a scalar is a scalar <laughs> i know this sounds ridiculous but you will forget it you will think why these can be combined yeah so every time i get a term with sin minus k0 in the end and the same term in the beginning with a transpose all i have to do is take a transpose right end and beginning same thing right so i'm going to and we use these tricks very very frequently okay so i can combine these terms u minus partial k0 with respect to x fx plus gx psi and plus g transpose x del v0 del x transpose yeah because i've just taken the transpose and that it all shows up inside okay so now in order to uh, claim so we already have so this is let me write it again v dot is less than equal to this quantity right so v dot is essentially what you want to prove negative definite right in some sense now uh, in order to claim that this is a control lyapunov function what do we need can anybody tell me what do i need to now show in the right hand side so v dot is obviously as you know that this is lf v uh, i will say lf bar v yeah why i put the bars is because uh, the drift is you know so in this case what would be f bar f bar would be fx plus g x i and 0 and g bar would be 0 and identity yeah because this is the drift vector field here basically terms multiplying the control and terms not multiplying the control as simple as that yeah so f bar is this guy and g bar is this guy yeah control only in the second very second state so identity here and drift only in the first state so zero here okay so that's why i say this is lf bar v plus lg bar vu so what do i need what do i need now if you look at this expression what do i need to claim that uh, uh, this v is a clf not g bar and f bar can you say that again carefully not g bar and f bar no 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 nothing to do with g and f g bar and f bar or g and f at all right i mean in the sense there is something more yeah yeah go ahead lg bar v equal to 0 means lf bar v is less than 0 yeah not just g bar and f bar they have no role hmm? as such okay okay so this is what i need to claim ha huh? so basically what so 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 the right hand side is exactly the same thing by the way yeah let's not get too confused right hand side is exactly the same thing everything multiplying the control is the lg bar v okay and everything not multiplying the control is lf bar v yeah obviously these two are scalars in this case yeah because lf lf bar v will always be a scalar 
because V is a scalar and LG bar V will be a scalar in this case because there is only one control. Okay. So, what is LG bar V in this case from the right hand side? Can you just read out and tell me what is LG? Absolutely. Thank you very much. So, this guy is actually equal to LG bar V. Okay. So, LG bar V equal to 0 implies what? So, LG bar V equal to 0 implies psi is equal to K naught X. Yeah. Exactly the thing that we wanted anyway. Remember. Yeah. Somehow it came back. Okay. And this if psi is equal to K naught X, you know that everything here goes to 0. By the way, these were all drift terms also. Right. I hope you believe that this, this multiplied by this was also a drift term, was part of LF bar V. Right. But because psi minus K 0 X goes to 0 or is equal to 0 if LG bar V is 0, all of these go away. Yeah. So, what am I left with? This implies that uh, L F bar V is less than equal to minus W X. Right, which is negative definite by defi by assumption. Okay, negative definite by assumption. Okay, I hope this is clear. Yeah, this is how we test for CLF. Okay, all we see is that if the term multiplying the control is zero, then what happens to the terms that are not multiplying the control? Okay. So, in this case, the term multiplying the control goes to 0 means this term goes away, which means these terms also go away. The only thing that is left is this guy, alright, and that is negative definite by assumption. W was positive definite minus W is negative definite, right, and this is enough to claim that uh, V x v x i is a CLF. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. Everybody is clear? Yeah. How we just constructed a CLF for a integrator system starting from a single system. All right. Of course, the questions on how do you get V0 and W and K0, all these remain. Yeah, we will that we we'll look at in examples, of course. But it's a constructive way. Yeah, all you did was kept con constructed an error and you added the error square, norm of error square. Okay. Now, if I was to ask you, what would be a choice of stabilizing controller for the system? Looking at this guy, what would you say? What would be a good stabilizing controller if I want to stabilize this system, XI system? What do you think? Can you use this expression? This is what is called you know, Lyapunov reshaping, right? That you take a Lyapunov function, V is, CLF is also a Lyapunov function, right? So you take this V, take the derivative and try to make the derivative negative definite. Right now, yeah, you said it's CLF and all that stuff, excellent. And you can use the Sontag universal formula, obviously. That's obviously one choice. But suppose I ask, ask you, just look at this and tell me what is a stabilizing control. Can you? Huh? Ooh, why? What? E to the parity. No, I want you to give me an expression for control, U. Huh. What will you do? Huh? Yeah, what will you choose as u if I want to make v dot negative definite? Anything, eh? Huh. So, this expression you will make 0. Uh, okay, so this entire thing gone. Okay, great. Does that make v dot negative definite? We are back there. I ask again, is V dot negative definite? Look very carefully. 
what is v a function of hmm okay it's only semi definite why there is no psi you don't all states don't appear not negative definite so not enough to make this zero something more what else what will you do great making zero is a good idea we need something more so first step is cancel this good now add something more to the control what else you can get motivation from the expression of v itself right v is positive definite i hope you believe that right i mean okay we never by the way we never discussed this very carefully <laughs> so maybe maybe i should go back there uh, do you believe that v is positive definite why v not x is positive definite right? great but but if you remember I, I we discussed this that if you have a sum of uh, two states and square it if it's like x1 plus x2 square it's a problem right because for x2 <coughs> equal to minus x1 it goes to zero huh? so how do you claim if i ask you to uh, to claim a bit carefully not just because it's a norm square how will i claim that this is positive definite in x and psi remember ha huh, go ahead correct so v not is definitely no problem ha huh? no 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 never say that that that's the same argument is saying that if this is not there it's positive definite is it positive definite if this is missing no hm has to be positive all variables have to be there okay so sure in x it's positive definite i mean there is nice positivity in x great what about the psi term you have to use the same test the test is still the same okay that it has to be positive everywhere but at zero at zero it has to be zero which it is v0 zero, zero is zero k0 zero, zero is zero so psi is zero so no problem at zero it is zero okay if x and psi are non zero in any combination then this has to be strictly positive is that true how do you prove it it is true of course this will make sense to construct this how would you claim it both are positive obviously so no, nothing can cancel each other right for it to be zero uh, both terms have to be individually zero so both terms have to be individually zero so the first term being zero implies what x is zero the only way first term is zero is if x is zero if x is zero k zero x is zero so if the second term is zero implies psi also has to be zero that is the only way this is how you will justify okay whenever we ask about positive definiteness you have to be very careful in this argument okay first of all and and again you look at how easily you get back to the old habit of saying oh it is because it's positive so it's positive definite okay as soon as i asked you you said this is positive definite it's not so it's a very easy to slip to old habits where you say that even if not all variables appear it's positive definite it is not okay so that's the first thing okay all variables have to appear for a function to be definite otherwise it's not definite it's only semi definite yeah keep this in mind second you have to do the usual test that for all non zero states it has to be greater than zero okay so the only way v can be zero because each of these is a non negative term is that each term is zero so if the first term is zero you know that x has to be zero only choice because v is, v0 is assumed to be positive definite right now if x is zero this guy goes away so this is just now half psi square so for this to be zero psi has to be zero therefore you know the only way the second term is zero and the first term is zero is only if both x and psi are zero okay so you have very clean evidence of positive definiteness excellent can you use the fact that this is positive definite to motivate how to choose the control here what do you think he's already suggested that you know we cancel these two terms which is good because i don't know anything about definiteness of these terms so it's 
the smart thing to do cancel these guys say that again but this is already cancelled right i've already removed this using some parts of u i mean i'm i'm going to basically i'm going to make u as plus del k0 del x fx plus gx i minus g transpose del v0 del x transpose so these two cancel out but i can add more terms in u what more should i add in u absolutely you just introduce a minus psi minus k0 x transpose okay if you just introduce a psi minus k0 x transpose what will i get minus norm psi minus k0 x whole squared okay which is now the combination becomes negative definite okay the combination is now negative definite so what is a using just this is and this is the standard lyapunov reshaping i'm going to write it here now control law by lyapunov reshaping is what is u equal to so i basically cancel minus del k0 del x sorry plus del k0 del x fx plus gx psi which is to cancel the first term then i cancel the second term this cancels the second term and then i introduce okay and you can verify the uh, dimension dimension will turn out well and this will give me v dot as less than equal to minus wx minus psi minus k0 x whole square which i know is negative definite right because the first term this is already definite so if both terms have to go to zero individually which means that x goes to zero and psi goes to zero just by the same argument as before okay all right so this is a valid control law in fact this is how we design control laws most of the time huh? yeah most of the times this is how we will design control laws by lyapunov reshaping we don't usually go back to the sontag universal formula mostly because the computations are very complicated yeah now if i put all the square roots and stuff here with this expression right you you see what is the uh notice <laughs> in this case uh, this was lg bar v great nice but what was lf bar v lf bar v is Uh, this guy this guy this this and this put together okay this was lf bar v okay very very painful looking so if i wanted to use the sontag universal formula of course it's a very painful calculation of course it's not i mean if you implement it numerically this is not a big deal yeah because you will just compute these as ax and bx and then you will just at every instant in time you compute ax in one place bx in another place and then you just compute this whatever this minus uh, the universal formula okay that's pretty straightforward but if i wanted to actually write it and uh, show things with it it becomes very difficult that's all okay and in fact in this case i know very much that this is also uh, because of this construction i actually use lyapunov reshaping i know that this will turn out to be a smooth controller also okay whereas the universal controller will only be almost smooth yeah here i can guarantee that it's a smooth controller just by looking at these expressions all right so most of the times we use this kind of a lyapunov reshaping all right